my beautiful friends. I am faking not being super nervous right now uh, because this next video, the one that you're about to watch and the one that I am currently editing, I am really nervous to put out there. Um, and I just wanted to give anyone watching this a quick trigger warning because there's content in here. It's not graphic, like don't worry about that. But I am gonna be covering subjects related to sexual assault and abusive relationships because the story of my faith, what exists of it, is very interconnected, intertwined with some not so awesome stuff. So if you're not in a place to hear that, skip this video and maybe watch cute puppy dog videos instead. Without further ado, here's, here's kind of the story of the last few years of my life. I'm just gonna stop talking and let you guys watch it and go not throw up from nervousness. <laughs> morning or afternoon or evening. Uh, today we're going to talk about faith, but please don't navigate away just yet because I'm not going to proselytize, I think that's the right word, or evangelize. I just want to share my experience. I don't have a super duper strong faith. I used to. I used to be that super religious, good, homeschooled Christian kid that you've probably seen stereotypes of. And so I want to take a few minutes today to kind of share my story. People have asked me if I'm like mad at God for taking away my leg, which side note, he didn't. Uh, I made the choice to get rid of it because it caused too much pain. But I did want to talk about faith because I think faith and health, just like faith in anything, are often um, very interrelated, intertied in our lives. And also while I'm doing that, remember the uh, Kind Notes company? They also have these cool mats and they sent me one for free, which was super nice of them. And I'm gonna open it up and uh, replace this rug with that rug. The trick is going to be not getting crushed by the box as I put it down. <laughs> All right, well, that was anticlimactic. It's actually not that heavy. I was homeschooled from the time that I was uh, like pre-K up until I was 16. When I was 16, I started going to a charter school. My parents had and have very strong Christian faith and wanted to share that with my brother and I. And so we grew up in the church and I super adhered to that. Like I was hook, line, and sinker, you've got me. I was full steam ahead. I was probably more on board with Christianity than, um, I, I would say like anyone in my family, but I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that like I did the role really, really well all throughout my high school years. Um, everything I did was about my faith. Everything I did was about God. I went to like a bunch of conferences. I was always going to youth group. I would start Bible studies at my school um, when I actually like started going to a charter school and stuff like that. And then I went away to a Christian college, but only for a year. Oh, come on. Success. All right, I did not think to bring scissors up here because I'm not that smart, but uh, that's okay. That's what we have hands for ripping and tearing with. That's probably a weird thing to say, but why else are we here, right? <laughs> Success. So I went away to Christian college, had an amazing experience just for a year there because after a year, guess what? My ankle died, uh, got very, very painful and made it so that I couldn't walk, like I couldn't walk around campus. Um, it just got really bad again. I had a doctor there tell me that I was gonna have to have another fusion, which is a, a pretty severe surgery, something that would be difficult to have when you're away at college. So I. Um, had to move back home. And I started going to this house church run by a family that I'd known and loved most of my life. That's where things kind of took a weird turn in my life. And this is where I get a little bit nervous talking to uh, 65,000 of you or however many click to decide to see this video. But hey, I'm here to be honest and authentic with you guys. And my assumption is that many of you have had similar experiences to what I'm about to share. So I'm gonna go ahead and share it. I met a guy at that church. He was serving in a position of leadership and essentially he was the world's biggest creep. Um, he was a lot older than I was. I was 19 at the time and um, he was a very abusive, very manipulative person. And we entered into a relationship, kind of. It was very secretive because no one could know because shocker, he was doing this to other people. Over the course of about 11 months, things got very, very bad, uh, very, sexually abusive, very mentally and emotionally and spiritually abusive, which culminated in um, 2011. Uh, I was sexually assaulted repeatedly and was able to exit that relationship. Now, the issue, along with that being an incredibly traumatic experience that changed me on a permanent level, was that he was a pastor. And so much of the spiritual abuse and manipulation tied in with how the church as a whole responded to me in the aftermath of that really messed me up. 
And so everything that I had known about my faith just came into question. And everything I believed for so long about humanity and people being good and like the world's a good place just crashed and burned, right? And I question everything, just everything. The good little homeschooled Christian girl was so gone. And um, the next years were really, really, really dark. I didn't like totally abandon my faith because I, I couldn't, like I tried. I was like, peace out God, I hate you. But it just didn't work because I felt like he was still there. Like whoever God was, I felt like he was still around me. And um, so I basically stopped investing my faith until I met Brian, who was super atheist at the time, but he knew that there was like a piece of me that was missing because I talked about how important my faith used to be. This is where Brian should get so many more points as a human being because he's just amazing because he did not care about like faith, but he was like, Joe, like I know this really mattered to you. I know this really hurt you, but why don't we start going to church together? Like, I know it's a scary place for you, but like, let's give it a shot together. God, he's so awesome, guys. Brian, I mean, like, God's awesome too. So we started going to church together. We took a couple like basic Christianity classes because I was like, ah, maybe I just don't know anything. So that started like sowing little seedlings of faith where I'm like, okay, well maybe I can have a relationship with God and maybe God isn't super scary because anything about God or Christianity was tied to like so much betrayal and so much trauma. Um, not just what, Not just what happened with this abusive man in my life, but also what happened with the church as a whole and how they responded to me after I had been in that abusive relationship. So almost two years ago now, I found out something as I was like reestablishing my faith that kind of made it crash and burn again. Uh, during the previous five years, I had been meeting regularly with, um, being mentored by, being counseled by, in survivor groups with. Actually, this guy did uh, Brian and my premarital counseling and he married us. And he was a family friend for a very, 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 very long time. Very integrated in my life. Um, I trusted this man. He was like decades and decades older than me, right? Also a pastor. Found out two years ago that he's actually a registered sex offender who had uh, abused women in three different countries. Yeah, so the little seedlings of faith I was talking about got stomped to the ground again by the fact that the person who was like nurturing my faith and who I trusted turned out to be yet another monster in my head. Weirdly enough though, that experience of being like, oh my God, the person who I like trusted to be a good person and like the person who I really thought had his faith together and was like really living his life like Jesus lived his life or whatever, was just this horrible person. That, that experience made me really realize that like, oh, I think I'm putting my faith in people a little bit too much. And so the past two years have been a journey for me of really separating any faith I have, I'm talking like spiritual faith, from people and making that more of a personal journey between me and God. And, you know, having conversations with people, sharing experiences, but leaving it at that because trying to engage in any organized anything has always been a very uh, traumatic experience for me in recent years. And so I do have faith. I absolutely do have faith. And I think that God has helped me through quite a few things in my life. And I've definitely felt a presence in a lot of really dark places in my life. With that being said, um, I struggle to like classify myself as Christian because I don't read the Bible, even though I think there's so much wisdom and so much love in that book. It's just so triggering and so traumatic for me to open it back up because of all the bad memories there. I'm not putting this, this together. I need to pause. Actually put this rug out because I said I was going to do that. Oh no. As one might expect, it has like the, the straps on it and I have no scissors. Or do I? Aha! Great success, guys. I'm really looking forward to when I don't have to crawl around the floor like a puppy dog. But hey. That day will come eventually. This is actually pretty cool, guys. This is not a paid ad. Like I said, they sent this to me for free because they're super, super nice and I thought it actually might help. I'll put the actual company down below and a link to this rug if anyone is interested in it. It's made of like squishy foam. I should stop brandishing weapons at you guys, huh? That would be, that would be a nice thing. Here's the moment of truth, guys. Legitimately a lot better. It's very slippery though. I hoped that that would look cool. I'm guessing, no, it probably looked really cool. I'm probably super awesome. We're just gonna go with that theory. Also circling back to the idea of, of faith and health. If you struggle with chronic pain, with chronic illness, with major life-changing surgery, and of course this extends to anything else as well, but I think that 
faith often gets called into question. Um, a lot of, you know, why questions come up, like why did this happen? And um, I've had questions come up of like, you know, have I questioned God because of this major life change that I've just gone through? And the answer to that is no, not at all. I've definitely had anger, just like anger, not directed at anyone at the way that life has gone sometimes because I would rather not have had all of this happen. But I think it kind of circles back to my theory of life, which is that things happen and we adapt. Human beings are incredibly adaptive, and I think that is one of the coolest things about us. We are so resilient. You are so resilient. I am very resilient. And when bad things happen, or things that we seem to think are bad, or that are painful experiences, or negative things, they suck, period. And also, we find a way to get through them if we determine that that's what we're gonna do. If we put our minds to it, if we keep going to bed and getting up in the morning, and um, finding a way through, we'll find a way through. And I think that if there is a God, and if God did create people, if that's the way things work, that uh, that is how he created us to be. So, um, no, I definitely don't have anger towards God for anything that happened or for how life is right now. It's just how life is right now, if that makes any sense. I'm not sure if that's a satisfying answer, but that's the answer that I have. Someone likes the box, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to hear about what kind of faith you guys have. Do you, are you religious? Like, do you adhere to a specific religion or do you just have faith in general? I am really fascinated to have conversations about spirituality with people because it's a, it's an idea and it's a topic that, that fascinates me. I've had so many negative experiences with organized religion, but that does not mean that I am in any way against it. I know that different things work for different people and everyone has a different belief system. So I would love to hear your thoughts. Also, to the person who sent me um, the White Throne of Judgment, which was a Christian tract, if you know what those are. I appreciate your concern for my soul. And also, if you wanna send me a return address, because it came without one, I would love to write you back. I would love to have a conversation with you. By the way, BL Page 2, I got your package full of the 90 and the 92% dark chocolate bar. I just wanted to say thank you and per your request, I did like the darker one a little bit better. Um, the darker the chocolate, the better. Like if I could just eat 100% dark chocolate, I don't think that exists. It probably does. I, I would probably do that. It's delightful. It's very bitter, but it's so good. Okay guys, I need to find a home for that old rug now and I will see you later. Bye guys. <laughs>